Okay, so this gentleman has a perianal lesion. You can see an anterior perianal lesion uh, in this area here, and it's typically like a wart. But the concern was raised last time we looked at it, there was a bit of an ulceration at the base of the wart. Now, as we all know, uh, perianal warts are most commonly due to uh, HPV type 6 and 11. However, co-infection with more oncogenic types are possible. So what we're going to do on this occasion, we're going to do uh, a biopsy for two reasons. One, to investigate this area at the base of the wall, which shows some erythema and possibly ulceration, which may be due to trauma, but we want to exclude a neoplastic event going on. So what we'll be doing is we'll be taking an excisional biopsy. Now, the, the base of the wart is quite substantial, so I probably won't be able to excise it all on this occasion, um, but we'll certainly remove, be able to remove the area which is uh, rather erythematous. Now, that may be just because of trauma, uh, rubbing together the buttocks, but we do need to uh, exclude any other pathology. On this occasion, the use of acidic acid is not really going to be particularly helpful because we're dealing with a, uh, a physically um, very obvious lesion. Um, and again, what I'll do is I'll just, I'll just zoom up into the erythematous area, which is really in the right anterior quadrant, as you can see from the still here. What I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be uh, taking a biopsy from that area, which is still quite angry looking. Okay, so what I'll be doing is I'm using some uh, uh, chlorhexine wash here, um, which I'll be applying to the area using a uh, gauze swab. Now, um, this is a little bit cold and wet, so don't be surprised if it feels a little bit unpleasant. It's just coldness and wetness is cleaning the area. And you will also notice a bit of, a bit of dribbling down your, your left buttock. So it's just a bit cold and wet, just to clean the area. And I'm making sure I'm starting uh, approximately and going distally. Okay, and then again, again cold and wet. What we'll do is retract the buttock a little bit more vigorously just to expose the area as best we can do. This is the last um, antiseptic going on. That's great, thank you. Sorry about that. A little bit horrible feeling that, isn't it? Is it stinging? Yeah. Okay, that's because the skin's broken. Um, okay, so next thing we're going to be doing is putting some uh, local anesthetic, lignocaine 2% with 1 in 200,000 adrenaline. So, this will use the tiniest needle in the department, but it will nip a little bit as the needle goes under the skin. So uh, be prepared. And the skin obviously around the perianal area is really quite sensitive. So I'm sorry, this is going to nip a little bit with the needle and subsequently with the injection going underneath the skin. It'll be over very quickly and then you get full anesthesia. So we'll just grab hold of your right buttock again. And then what I'm going to be doing, JP, is I'm actually going to put some local anesthetic jelly on the skin. Uh, so it's, it's basically like, it'll feel a bit like lube, so some, like some lube going on just now, okay? okay. And what I'll do is I'll just gently massage that into the area. To give you a bit of low anesthesia there. I'm going to leave it on for about a minute. Why that low anesthesia? You'll end up with a, quite a numb feeling on your bottom, but that's probably not a bad thing. So we'll get into that area. Okay, good, we'll leave that for about a minute. So the perianal skin has a very high density of uh, sensory nerve endings, um, and uh, there's a wide variation in ability to tolerate procedures on the perianum. Um, typically, we would use uh, a needle with some local anesthetic to provide anesthesia. Occasionally, we need to prepare the skin prior to the injection with uh, local anesthetic, and with the way we do that, we use with one of the many different uh, creams available with local anesthetics. Uh, so we've used on this occasion 4% uh, lignocaine gel, which we apply to the surface of the skin. And because the skin is already slightly eroded, um, it should be absorbed very quickly. And once that uh, lignocaine has uh, started to have its effect, then we can go ahead and give the uh, intradermal uh, local anesthesia. Okay, so what I'm going to do next, JP, we're going to grab hold of your right butter. Um, you feel me just touching the surface of the skin, just now removing some of the um, jelly. And you will feel a slight pressure here again, but it shouldn't feel as quite as sore as before. Okay, do you want a pillow to bite? Are you okay? Okay, so a little bit of a local anesthetic going in just now. Well done. Well done. That's it. That's it. You've got it. You're over the worst now.
Okay, so what we've done now is we've actually put some local anesthetic already in the skin, so that was already beginning to cause a bit of local anesthesia. And once that started working, I'll put a little bit more in. Now the great advantage of using adrenaline in this particular mix is that it's, as you can see, hardly any bleeding at all. But it does cause the skin to turn, change colour, to become more pale, and that's why it's very important you're very clear where you're going to do your biopsy before you insert the local anesthesia. The volume of the anaesthetic also alters the appearance of the uh, lesion, so again you need to be very clear exactly where you're going to do the biopsy before. In this case it's very straightforward because the area of erythema is the area we're targeting. What I'm going to do just now is I'm going to check the surface of the skin to, to see whether it's still sore or not. Okay, did you feel me touch that at all? Touch you? No. Okay, so what I'm going to do is actually going to put a bit more local anaesthetic in the skin because it's already, uh, already got so much. I want to make sure we've got a really good anaesthesia. It's about another mil going in. So it's feeling slightly nippy there, but that's it. You've got three mils of local anaesthetic in there, which will, which will give you a good level of anaesthesia. Again, we'll leave that for about a minute. And whilst we're waiting for that anaesthetic to, to work, we'll just check what uh, instruments we have. And we have here. We have toothed uh, forceps, we have um, curved scissors, and we also have our, our 3-0 um, suture. Now we will not be using the um, punch biopsy on this occasion because I think the curved scissors will be uh, more, get a more uh, representative biopsy. Let's make that ready on the sterile field. Okay, so what I'll do just now is I'll just double check to make sure there's an adequate level of anesthesia. You will feel me gently um, pushing and pulling a little bit of the skin, but any tenders at all? No. Nope. You can see here the uh, uh, high power of the lesion there, which will take, which will remove most of it, I think, on this occasion. It's become swollen with the uh, low class aesthetic. You can see there where the local anaesthetic went in. Okay. Now I might actually do this under the magnifying glass so I can get a really clear idea of what I'm doing. So you feel me gently um, pulling a little bit of the skin. That's the first biopsy done just there. Okay, and I'll pop it in the formal saline. I'll remove a little bit more. Take a little bit more from here. Sometimes easier, as I say, to do it under the um, microscope. Have a look again. I may take just one more section, we'll just check. I think what I'll do, I'll just take one more section, that, that way we have a nice neat edges and uh, it'll be able to heal. There's an area. Oops, there we go. A little bit more. Okay, well done. All right, so that's the biopsy done. What I'm going to do next is I'm going to um, pop a couple of stitches in there to bring the two Okay, just a couple of sutures in here. You'll feel me pushing away the surface of the skin just now. What I'll do is I'll pop a suture in here. OK, 
Okay, put the suture in. Can I dab that for me, please? Great. Really retract for me, please, Julian. That's great. Another suture in here. Okay, good, that's the second suture in. Just tidy up the ends. And I'll just, and what I'll do is I'll just um, put a little bit of gauze swab on that area just to tie it up. Would you have some more antiseptic, please? You really retract for me, beautiful. Antiseptic? Yeah. I'll just tidy that area up with some antiseptic. I'm going to take a photograph just to demonstrate we've got a good, nice couple of good sutures in there. And there you've got nicely uh, tidied up. I'll just take a photograph of that area there. 